along with me as we circle the globe with our adventure-loving World Gone Wild team. Today we have zoologist Dan Maloney, veterinarian Dr. Ian Robertson, and wildlife filmmakers Ginger Mani and Kira Goodall. First, we're off to India. Baby elephant won't last long in the wild, but if you know what you're doing, you can nurture one into a healthy adult. From the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Kenya, here's Kira Goodall. I'm Kira Godal. We're at the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Nairobi, Kenya. Behind these gates are a group of baby elephants that are going to make you smile. But the story behind them won't, because all these elephants are orphans. Yes, this is exactly what it looks like. A baby elephant play group having a muddy good time. This is more than making mud pies. A daily mud bath keeps these delicate baby elephants from getting sunburned. Allow me to introduce a few of my playmates. This is Ilanguesi. She was barely born when she fell into a deep pit and was left by a herd because they couldn't rescue her. And Natimi here was orphaned when her mother was killed by gunfire. <laughs> and this little man, like Ron, was barely born when he was found by the Maasai and airlifted here. But underneath the fun and games is a very serious mission because these young elephants would never have survived on their own in the wild. The Trust is a very special place, an orphanage that specializes in raising very young, abandoned elephants. And Daphne Sheldrick is the woman who started it all. There's always a lot of heartbreak raising wild animals, and uh, particularly with the elephants, because it all depends on what sort of state they are when they come in. We've managed to save 24, but we've lost 18. You try and sort of duplicate what a baby elephant would have in the wild, and uh, the first thing is a family. In the wild, a baby elephant is never left alone, constantly being cared for by its family. When that family is lost, the grief is enormous. They can't sleep properly. They have nightmares at night, a lot of crying, um, just very sad eyes, lethargic, don't want to play. You know, a lot of elephants, when they come in, they just want to die. Daphne realized the lost elephant family could be replaced by humans. That's the job of the keepers, who spend 24 hours a day with their charges. Over time, the baby elephants become extremely attached to these keepers, their new family. You, all of you, yeah. are really the yeah. family yes. of these elephants. Yeah. Do they miss you if, if you go away? Yeah, yeah. For baby elephants, touch is vital. These youngsters need constant reassurance, so the keepers are constantly caressing and touching them, often blowing into their trunks so the babies know their scent. They say, once you've blown into an elephant's trunk, he'll never forget you. They always like to put their trunks around your, yeah. your neck when you're Yeah, they, they like that because, you know, sometimes when they are drinking milk to their mothers, they have to, to put their trunk on the top of their mother. They feel like their mothers. Yeah. And they also, if you, you see right here, they, they love to, to touch the blankets as well, don't they? When they are news, they have to feed them with the blankets to feel the, their mothers. They don't feel the security. They need to feel that yeah. warmth of something warm and big next to them. Yeah. So they can cuddle. Yeah. Daphne believes elephants experience a full range of emotions, very much like human beings. With these baby elephants, you can see there's a bit of jealousy and competitiveness at feeding time. Uh-oh, we've got, we've got another jealousy attack here. Oh, no. Throughout the day, the yeah. keepers need to check the elephants' temperatures. So this is how they, they check the baby's temperatures. Yeah. They put their hands right here. It is nice, yeah. soft here. And that's what they can tell if they're cold. And this is another jealous attack right here. <laughs> In the wild, the herd protects young elephants from getting too hot or too cold. At the orphanage, umbrellas shade the elephants from the hot sun. The keepers even use sunblock to protect these little guys' ears. At night, when the air turns cool, blankets keep these baby elephants warm. But the loving reassurance of the human family is only half of the reason why Daphne Sheldrick is the only person to have successfully raised infant elephants. 
The other half is diet. A baby elephant can't live without milk if it's orphaned under two years of age. And even those that are over two, there are very few of them can survive without milk. A big part of her secret is inside these bottles. Let's take a look. So it's all done according to weight. Elephant milk is not easy to make. So that's the actual milk powder. And Daphne's special formula was developed through trial and error. When I fed them cow's milk, they died. But when I fed them milk with no fat in, they lived longer, but they wasted away. So I knew the problem was a fat problem. All the ingredients are measured precisely to ensure the calves get the right amount of nutrition. This here is the vitamin C. Starting with the baby formula, she adds vitamins and minerals to help the calves grow their mammoth skeletons. There's no such thing as overfeeding a baby Ellie. The smallest drinks 30 pints per day, and that will eventually build up to 40 pints per day by the time they're ready to be weaned. If you have children, you know this routine. If you're thinking about having some, I can't imagine a better training ground. In the wild, calves romp together, strengthening their cardiovascular systems and muscles. Here at the Trust, the favorite game to stay in shape is elephant soccer. Oh, Maluti's got the ball. Oh, we've got the tire now. The tire's in the game. Well, they love playing. It's good for them to feel happy, to feel excited. Uh, they really enjoy it. And in an elephant herd, they, they would play amongst each other. The calf who fights the hardest and struggles the most is Laiban. His Maasai name means spiritual leader, and he has a strong will to survive. He often falls when he's running, a result of the damage he sustained in his traumatic birth. Uh, Laiban was born premature, dumped on a busy road in the Maasai Mara, and had severe injuries all along one side, and so he needed very intensive care. We never really expected him to make the night, let alone three months. He's now three months old. Daphne's goal here is to provide a good quality of life for the elephants. These orphans will be integrated into the wild herd at Savo National Park, a process that can begin when the calves are a year old. They walk with their keepers in the bush every day, learning the, their way around, uh, making contact with the wild herds. Uh, then eventually they pluck up the courage to start making friends in amongst the wild herds, and then they start finding elephants more stimulating than humans. And uh, eventually they spend nights out, then weeks away, and then months away, and then years away. And then they bring their wild friends back to meet the human family. Uh, so we never know how many elephants might turn up at the night stockade. Savo has over 8,000 elephants, the largest population in Kenya. But outside of Savo, the elephant's future is in jeopardy. Poaching has started again with the easing of the ivory ban, unfortunately. Um, the elephants so far in national parks are protected. But once they leave the national parks, because of the burgeoning human population, their migration routes have been cut, there's a lot more settlement, so there's a lot more sort of conflict between humans and elephants. By the end of the busy day, the baby ellies are tired and there's only one thing left to do, go to bed. They sleep next to their keepers, safe in their assurance that they are loved. The best part is when, when they grown, and when they're comfortable with the wild herds, and when they come back with their wild-born calf, as our first orphan now has, and when they bring their wild friends back, and you see this enormous animal, and you remember it as a little fragile thing like Libon, and you just can't believe it. And then they come all around you, you have all these trunks stuck to your face, and they tower above you, and they're all as gentle as anything and pleased to see you. That gives you a really good feeling, and you know you've saved a herd. Up next, more fishing tips from the Alaska.